contingency. And there is so much you can learn from sports in terms yeah. of teamwork, in terms of discipline, in terms of how to rely on somebody that is so nicely translated into business. So mm -hmm. I tell you this honestly, and I'm not asking to the audience here, but like athletes have such an unfair advantage because you guys have proven to have this personal characteristic that uh, non-athletes do not have right. like you have stamina you have grind you have motivation figure it out and if you can translate in business gosh you will be winners <laughs> no, but Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Sporting Global Podcast. And today I'm here with Maya. Maya, welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm hyped. I'm literally hyped to be doing this because sports and esports and gaming and whatnot is my favorite subject to talk about. So I can't wait where we take the audience today. I mean, like, this is this is the perfect spot then to talk about all of this. Uh, I mean, like, we're going to talk about your experience, too, with with and dipping your foot into the gaming, esports, sports world as well, which is not... Yeah, I don't look the role, do I? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's not your typical, like, industry where you've been at, but you still manage somehow to get your foot in there. Like, that, that we got to talk about for, 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 for sure. But I, I think, you know, for those of you that are tuning in, like my eyes, obviously, you know, a lot of experience with digital marketing, consultancy, you know, doing a lot of cool stuff in and outside of sports. But we're going to focus on the sports part because that's what we love. That's what you're odd. That's what the people here is here for. It's talking about sports, learning about sports. And uh, we're super excited to have you here, Maya. You know, I think it's going to be good. Can't wait. Let's give it a roll and provide value bombs. Let's do it. All right. So. I just want to know like where this passion, I guess, came from, from like digital marketing and uh, like, just tell us a little bit about your journey in, in life and in, in like how this, how you ended up where you are today. <laughs> oh, that's loaded. That's loaded. <laughs> that's a loaded question. Cool. So I was always a little bit of a geek. Um, I was the first college student that brought like Toshiba computer in the classroom. We didn't nice. even have chargers back then, but yeah, yeah. we wanted to take notes uh, electronically <laughs> and whatnot. So I'm literally obsessed with technology as far as I remember. Like I was playing all sort of weird games like Prince of Persia, <laughs> Civilization. That's too yeah. Uh So yeah, that is like, uh, childhood passion of mine to be connected right. with tech. However, I went to study business and not before I was like 21 or something, these, mm -hmm. these worlds like intercepted nicely. So right. I was in front of a challenge when I had to sell like, uh, I think it, the sales target there was like 200K or something like that of a hardware device to the US market. And I was like, oh geez, I'm this simple girl from Slovenia. I've never been to the US. I don't know a lot of people from the US. How could I do that? And there I had this epiphany of just like getting obsessed with experimentation process, right? So mm -hmm. instead of saying that, hey, to do that, I need like 300K budget and I would yeah. divide it between like five or six marketing channels and we'll pray for the best. I was just like, all right, we will select a couple of things that we expect that will work amazingly well and we'll mm -hmm. just prioritize the shit out of them in order to get big wins as soon as we can and that was a radical mind shift for me so yeah i was 20 something early 20s by then and yeah. suddenly everything that i was doing before made sense so i knew that i wanted to work in technology i knew that i wanted to work on something that is extremely analytical and fast-faced and connected with culture because that's right. why i like gaming and just like the computer technology as well right because yeah it's so yeah. much more than a product it's a lifestyle right right and i guess like that's where our civilization came into hand too <laughs> probably <laughs> <laughs> you know all, all that analytical strategical stuff you know it, it all it all pays off down the road <laughs> No, but I have a brother like who is an athlete. So uh, he's like, uh, he used to train uh, basketball professionally. Right. right now he runs like a scaling agency, a digital marketing agency. Mm -hmm. And there is so much you can learn from sports in yeah. terms of teamwork, in terms of discipline, in terms of how to rely on somebody that is so nicely translated into business. So mm -hmm. I tell you this honestly, and I'm not asking to the audience here, but like athletes have such an unfair advantage because you guys have proven to have this personal characteristic that uh, non-athletes 
do not have right. like you have stamina you have grind you have motivation figure it out and if you can translate in business gosh you will be winners <laughs> no but it, it's a really good point and i think you know a lot of the people that are you know listening in here and that are tuning into like and, and want to work in sports is people that you know has a relationship with it in, in somehow and most of them is like you played sports you know when you were young or you and then you started coaching maybe and then you sort of like you have that mentality in there and then as you were talking about like how do you then captivate you know that talent and i guess like that framework and utilizing it to your next step which is you know business or whatever that's going right yeah, and I love how you phrase it because uh, these skills could be directly translated into um, like profitable businesses as well. I think later on in this vidcast and podcast, we will of course touch upon how to do like online courses for right. sports. I'm just right now working with a trainer for our um, national basketball representation. He's a conditional right. trainer. So um, the sport preps and we are developing online courses. What? Because if God right. forbid another lockdown happens, people will have to do something and we should better right. equip them to do stuff in a way that will benefit them so that they won't lag behind. Yeah, no, and I mean, like, we we don't really know where <laughs> where the future will, will hold at this point, you know? I think, like, I'm, I'm just happy, like, Norway's open, like, as a country again, and, like, I saw also, like, Scandinavia was pretty much open, but I'm just, okay, just be patient here. It's going to take time. Winter is coming, you know, so we'll... <laughs> we'll, see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes but uh let's let's talk a little bit into your way into the sport industry i guess because mm -hmm. you know obviously a lot of experience uh with a variety of companies and and take us a little bit through i guess like the opportunities that came up within the sport industry and i think as a follow-up question on that is as well as did you notice any you know differences outside sure. inside sports sure thing so it happened to me later on in my career as i was like transitioning for maybe like eight or ninth year in because i had a bunch of tangible achievements in terms of hardware marketing yeah. like high-tech products as well as online courses right. and suddenly i kind of attracted a lot of attention from esports and sport brands as well mm -hmm. um crypto helped as well because i'm a type of a girl who never says no to a challenge, right? right? So people might be petrified. I haven't done this or something like that. And I would be like, hmm, interesting industry. Let's try right. to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm being honest about this, right? I'm not mm -hmm. bullshitting to anybody that I have like previous experience with their vertical. And I'm just like negotiating one deal with NFTs for the football league. So for the buyer um, and like um, football league from Germany, uh, mm -hmm. which is Bundesliga. Um, yeah. And that's a very interesting project, but I would never go on a call and say, hey guys, I know everything about football because I apparently don't. Right. But I do know a thing or two about marketing, which could be damn applicable to their case so that's probably exactly. sufficient making totally. it relevant you know to to totally. them and to the specific industry and and i guess like talking a little bit about like the noticeable difference i guess that you've seen um you know working with companies outside of sports and then you know my more directly in sports like what kind of differences did you see and i guess like that was more noticeable and maybe also impacted i guess your your work that you were doing well, I'll just go one step back and just like explain you about this gambling and gamification part of the esports. So um, I'm a very, how to say, um, prone to risk, right? So I love risk is my life. It <laughs> keeps my juices flowing. I'm yeah. just on this adrenaline junkie right. and esports and just like the betting industry and everything around it is so very attractive to me because yeah. it has to do with like these prime human instincts, right? So sure. we are all searching for rewards. We would all like to make a quick buck and yeah. we are just like intrigued by the quick paced happening by the quick paced environment. And that's something that I find personally very interesting and honestly like it keeps me awake not monster but yeah that um so yeah um when i have these gigs either in crypto or with online bets or with just like developing sporting programs for some athletes or trainers um mm. I, I have i have this highest 
amount of arousal, if you know what I mean. Right. Like I'm right. so alert, like stuff will be happening so quickly and yeah. it's such an exciting project for me to take. So I love them personally. They are my passion projects. Other than that, how they are different to a normal project. So you have to deal with a community a lot, right? So again, we were talking how this is a lifestyle, how this is a passion of somebody and you have mm -hmm. to put your skin in the game. There is no other way. For example, if I wouldn't be playing, then I would probably suck at selling like computer enhancement softwares yeah. or let's say equipment or something like that. So you know, have to know the culture, you have to be a part of the community and that's tremendously important. So you literally have to use the product yourself. You have yeah. to know the lingo, you have to be in it to win it as we like to say the second stuff is that in sports a lot of times like you cannot use a lot of those mainstream options that some of the e-commerce partners would be doing right mm -hmm. so for example if you are doing like nfts or like betting industry or something like that you will get penalized on facebook and google quite severely so right. you have to be a little bit more innovative about channels and about how to gain traction so mm -hmm. you have to think more subversively and you really 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 have to be like looking for the next opportunities so when we did like an esports project um and I hate to say it, but we were advertising on porn sites because everywhere else we were sanctioned. And luckily, like it was a very good campaign. Yeah. But uh, look, I'm not here to do moral judgment. So um, that was just like something that was kind of vibing with a product. So, yeah, you have to be a lot more inventive when it comes to channels. Right. And the third thing, um, it's the big bucks money game. <laughs> so um, influencers are pretty expensive. You yeah. have to secure a couple of funding. So if you are just like bootstrapping make sure that you have a healthy community fundraising campaign before you hit the whales because yeah. price is there i mean people know their value right they yeah. are approached with sponsorship deals a lot so it's not as if i could be like hey macy would you like to support my lady startup that one no happen. problem I don't have... no problem <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i'll do it for the love of technology sure i will so no yeah problem. don't be naive um this is like the game when especially when it comes to influencers and also like buying media space yeah. where prices are preset and you have to have certain budgets when you are trying to go big but you can bootstrap right. those budgets that's good news because if you have a healthy community then you can find early supporters so it can yeah. still happen so that in a nutshell would be the main difference that i've seen throughout my career i think it's uh, you know very interesting for you to kind of like uh, i guess the part that you're talking about sort of like the um sport mentality like the athlete mentality the sort of like the, the in it to win it you know the the passion and i mean like sport is probably the one of the most passionate industries out there totally. and, for good, and for good reason you know it's a it's a it's a luxury we're extremely you know lucky to be working with the industry to and, and for yourself as well being part of those you know sectors and projects and, and and it's really fun you know for for me i guess there's been like always in sports in a sense since the beginning of like hearing you kind of like oh it's my passion project it's the stuff that like you know really excites me and i'm like i'm, I'm glad i'm glad we kind of like can bring people from the outside in, in a sense like in and just feeling that passion because i think sometimes we feel like we're very we're very alone you know like in that uh, i guess like passionate mindset of like oh you're you're like a sports geek or like whatever it is but but i think what, what you're bringing up here too is is that you know utilizing that mindset and passion which i think is going to be really key you know when we get a little bit closer to the end here of like some tips that you might have for you know these sure. young students and professionals that are trying to break in um i have to talk a little about sport radar you know which uh you know obviously is, is something that you've been uh part of as well and they've been obviously you know super hot these days you know went public and all this stuff and i mean like just just a fun fact that's we're a norwegian company to like sport writer in trondheim you know you gotta it's funny to see you know how we're able to achieve these things from from all over the world of course they have offices everywhere but um i want you to kind of like map out a little bit of what you did as sport radar and also what kind of key lessons can you share with us with working with such a very heavy technology company in sports. 
Because that's what it is. <laughs> cool. So um, full disclaimer here, um, I was just like in task force for one of their sure. projects for yep. Sport Rather Media. Yep. And I didn't have an insight of the entire organization. But a friend of mine, his name is Luca Pataki, and I definitely nominate him to be a guest on this podcast. Uh, he's yeah. a head of innovation at Sports Raider, and he have a bunch of different projects. So him and I have been talking about just like how to develop a regional ecosystem for startups. They mm. have a bunch of grants um, of how like Sports Raider is subsidizing um, sports data for startups that would like to utilize this in their technological innovations. So they are giving a lot back to their ecosystem. And he's like kind of a lead of that um, ecosystem that they are developing for the sporting product and yeah he's my gateway to the entire industry uh he used to work at Henkel which is very surprisingly but yeah he has been obsessing himself with sports at sport bed since like high school students ever since right. I remember him so yeah it's definitely his passion and his dream come true that he's working there but uh, here is the thing about sports radar it's a very decentralized organization and I think that I will speak about this publicly for the very first time I was interviewed to work at Sports Raider. I was interviewed at um, their headquarters in uh, Linz, but unfortunately, we came into the miscommunication that I speak German. Right. Which I do, but to have beer with you, not to do business. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that was a little bit <laughs> of an awkward I think interview. all can speak beer in German. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Noch yeah, einmal, yeah. bitte. Danke sehr. Oktoberfest. Yeah. Ooh la la. No, that's French. Uh, so yeah, that was a that mixture was like of a little... all kind of European languages there. <laughs> Kind of, kind of, with a Slavic accent. Yeah, <laughs> that makes exactly. it interesting. Well, if you don't so, have the accent, you know, it's uh, it, it's part of it. You know, you gotta have that. <laughs> yeah, short thing, short thing. It gives you this jazz. So, uh, yeah. Um, we, with just like having observed his career for the last yeah. five years or so, so the yeah. company is a fast grower, right? Of course, like the primary source of um, like where the business operation happened is having like gazillion of scouts at all the major matches. They entered the esports quite successfully. And I don't believe it's my story to tell. I'm yeah. just like extremely blessed and honored that right. um, as an external consultant, I had a chance to develop a couple of conversion tools with them um, at a couple of workshops. So that was kind of my gate to this super interesting company, Sports Rider, and I hope to repeat it again rather soon. But as we know, sporting yeah. industry in 2020 has took quite a hit. So there was a lot of events and it's devastating for betting and for media because everything last year, you of course all remember was Corona related. So I think that we are picking up again in the yep. meanwhile, we learned a lot about esports and how esports could be monetized. So, yeah, I believe this is where future lies in this hybrid between like physical world, all this excitement, and the um, esport part of the things. And another yep. interesting project that I did uh, down that light was Estable. So, these are mm -hmm. horse bets um, in Sweden. Um, I didn't even know that horse betting is such an interesting sport in Europe. Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I think we all are something new here. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Yeah, but like horse races are apparently very popular in Europe as well. Yeah. So that was kind of like information database of how well a certain horse or a certain racer will perform. And right. it was an interesting like information product. Um, yeah. So every product, I mean, it's so different, but so the same because what people are buying is like increase their chances to win and it's the same in gaming so literally right. you would invest in the latest hardware or something like that to have a chance to beat your body and that's very primer i mean this is mm -hmm. like such a profound like such a genuine human wish to find a secret weapon so that yeah. you would suddenly become the best version of yourself and beat the competition off no, oh, I mean, like, that's what it comes down to. It's sports at the end of the day, right? It's uh, whether that's, you know, gaming, it's professional sports, it's, uh, you know, team sports or individual sports. It's like, how do you, how do you end up at top, right? And I think that's, that's, that's the main, uh, main, main challenge. And I guess like, you know, of course, we're more do you know the Pokemon soft uh, song, I want to be the very best. Hey, who doesn't? <laughs> that's, that's a that's classic. I'm, I'm born in 91, it. you know, like it was, uh, <laughs> you know, the Pokemon movie. Oh. 
You know, it's uh, the, we don't have to go down memory lane on that. <laughs> okay, go. Let's give that. <laughs> That's that's like for off the record podcast. <laughs> After the um, yeah, I mean, like we all. I also wanted to talk a little bit about sort of like um, some mentoring and counseling you have did, you have done, you know, and, and are doing with athletes and fitness instruction. And you touched a little bit upon it in the beginning in terms of mm-hmm. you know the the sort of like the focus on building online courses and especially during the COVID, of course, and and I guess like how. I guess has the transition been for these athletes adapting to online and I guess what key tips do you have for for them in terms of that as well because it's it's like a new world you know to to, to think about and especially for them that are sort of like in their bubble and now they're okay how do I now transmit what I'm knowing into digital courses I also think I'm so excited to talk about this because this has been like such an important subject for the last year or so for me, because um, in service businesses, it's all about scalability, right? So if you are doing like one-on-one coaching, you could get paid, I don't know, 100, 200 euros per hour, but it's always limited by the amount of hours that you have to sell. So you're income is kind of limited to the amount that a certain person is willing to pay for your services but whenever you ship to digital products like the line goes as this it literally explodes it becomes exponential why because one additional unit that you sell will no longer cost you anything in terms of time or money you just Mm -hmm. have to figure it out what the good digital product is and that guys i cannot tell you enough but that has been essential for, for folks that I'm working with in transitioning Corona times, because remember before they have had like successful training operations of their own. Right. Um, and I did that for human sports as well as dog sports, which is fascinating. Um, so yeah, everything was done like service wise and yep. we had to learn a couple of new skills in order to transition to the digital courses. So here are a couple of advices that I'm so eager to share. First one, don't try to program your own uh, learning management system. Use Thinkific or use Teachable in order to get it started because then you only have to produce a curriculum and like a couple of videos. And if you have a healthy audience already built in, inevitably, like if you launch any digital product, you will sell for a couple of thousand euros, which will give you a good head start that you can Mm -hmm. later on invest in marketing. So don't go and don't buy any development services. You can do everything yourself when it comes to design and develop at this stage just be focused that you want to monetize your audience for like three or five thousand euros or whatever you can think um, Mm -hmm. that you can get out of this the second one is structure and structure is so important the best advice that i have for any online course creator is what you need to put as your course content is what you are repeating again and again and you are sick and tired of repeating because these are your core fundamentals and people really have to learn that combine audio Combine like video and text messages in order to get this message across, but Mm. do develop your methods. And remember, education is a way of transformation, right? So I am this fat person at the beginning and I want to be this fit person at the end of the tunnel. And I need to trust you that you will take me there. So it's a journey of transformation. And if you can provide me some evidence in terms of social proof from people who have done it before and have been satisfied with the method and with the program that you have developed, this will be your ultimate bestseller. This will be the most valuable marketing materials that you have. Remember, education is transformation and this is how you do it um in real life i saw the majority of problems with people just like get stuck in how to make the structure of the course right so i don't know what to teach i don't know how to structure the lecture and i was just like imagine this like if a client came to you and they would ask you like if you would make them like 10 kilo slider or something like that or maybe like your dog to behave like a lady or a gentleman that they are <laughs> how how would you guide them what are the standard steps that they would take so right. literally you have to deconstruct your methods and make it visibly attractive so don't make any courses that are longer than 20 minutes that's a yeah you should mm. definitely keep it shorter like a couple of minutes clips and just like 
good structure will take you anywhere. And don't underestimate the power of the audience that you have already built. This will be your first ambassadors and first people who will give you testimonials. It was a really, really loaded answer, but I'm very passionate about this subject. Yeah, so I'm going uh, to it off. Know. And and I guess like if there's one you know key word people should take from this is is transformation right it's like it has yes. to be a transformational journey from like okay from from A to you know Y or, or I mean like in Norway yes. we have like from A to O you know all the way we have three more letters you know in our alphabet. <laughs> awesome! Congratulations, so, you guys are a rich country in many ways. That, that was probably the reason why. No, <laughs> probably not. Um, yeah. So. I wanted also to talk a little bit about, um, I guess, when you were leading the business unit at EKWB, which is obviously a gaming computer supplier. I, I might be wrong here, but that's at least what I kind of understood it as when I was looking it up. Um, and I guess like, you know, in this role, well, you work closely with managing deals in the esport industry directly. And I guess working with such a fresh industry, which which esport is, and I guess you've been you know seeing that for the last few years as well. Um, what kind of tips do you have for for students out there that are sort of like, you know, trying to understand the esport and influencer industry? And the reason why I mention this is because, you know, there's there, there's a lot of people now that are opening their eyes for working in esports, but I think they're kind of like a little bit. Um, clustered of, of like they think they have to work for a team like they, it, it's even that for like a traditional sports right but you know you're you know you are leading a business unit at a gaming content like a gaming computer supplier right and you work mm-hmm. with esports so it's sort of like a way where okay long story short like how is it to work with such a fresh industry and what kind of tips do you for them to like try to understand this yeah, cool. Let's just frame it a little bit. So EKWB is a company that innovated the um, computer cooling industry. So they are enhancing computers and they have a bunch of different solutions. Uh, right. I won't go into them, but like there is all in one, there is custom loop and there are gaming computers. So I just temporarily led the business unit of gaming computers yep. um, as like there was a change of leadership right there and I was eager to take the role. So um, at the beginning, I was a little bit rot <laughs> because <laughs> it was like entirely new world right yeah. i went to gaming but i for god's sake i play fortnite i play like these really basic bitches games right. i'm not like this uh fierce gamer so it was a lot that i had to learn about the industry per se and that is exactly where the opportunity lies for landfall so today i was teaching people at the primary school and we had like maybe 14 gamers there and one of them had like 20k tiktok followers which was ridiculous for a child that is like 15 years old and i was stunned like i was so profoundly impressed by how well do you young guys understand the industry so my first call to action is come and help us come and teach us the way how do you use discord how do you use twitch uh, which influencers yeah. are relevant to you because i do believe that one of the jobs in the future of like two years to three years maybe mm-hmm. is like influencer management and for me like a very old and very busy lady it's a little bit awkward to go and like <laughs> tweet <laughs> A couple of influencers if they would be willing to take some of my free stuff and a little bit of money in order to record a video um, but right. you guys like there is such an opportunity if you are in the game if you are following all these amazing influencers you could easily become like an influencer management for a hardware company for an energy drink company for like whatever people are investing into gaming because right now we have fashion we have even furniture industry I mean gaming became so mainstream and there is a gazillion of opportunities and here age does not matter like the best tiktok consultants that i have are like freaking nine years uh, 19 years old and they are stats i mean they are killing it so no entry barriers into the field uh there is one person that i would recommend for specifically to follow his name is um chris smith he has a company for esports and he's pretty big on linkedin as well as on like twitter and instagram there he has like a handle uh chris mayo um mayo is a mayonnaise um so yeah he's 
is like this amazing dude that shares gazillion types of like insights. So just okay. follow a couple of those guys, maybe write them for an internship or something like that and go and help hardware and other brands that are transitioning into mail, primarily like gaming oriented audience um, to guide us how to do the campaigns because we old farts, like we who are like 30 and 40 years old, uh, we don't know a shit about what's hit and trendy in the moment. And we really need you to uh, guide us through this uh, exciting light landscape. Other than that, um, in esports, what else you could do? Um, I definitely want you to play the games, right? Because if you are talking with people, you should be able to express this genuine, genuine excitement about what somebody is doing. That will influence a lot of how much you are actually paying them if you can relate to them if you are like interacted with their content if you are like posting some valuable comments so just like spend some time doing that strategically that is not just like passively watching but engaging into debates um differentiating yourself from others maybe start streaming yourself i mean i i would if i could but i don't have time so um yeah this is something that is very 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 feasible for young people and i think you guys could make a bunch of money doing that i think it's uh you know it, it touched a little bit upon what you were talking in the earlier as well in terms of just um i guess understanding you know the the, the sectors and it's not like you don't have to you don't have to know everything and that's that's totally fine because you won't either sure. and it's part of the you know the learning process but it's just putting yourself in the that sector understanding like as much as you can and then yes. obviously getting you know people around you with with different kind of skills and knowledge and, and and i think you're super right too which which obviously you know is that the technology and innovation and, and especially gaming like streaming all this stuff like it's moving so fast and and it's fascinating too like how these young people are like, you know, just solving these, I guess. There is no entry barriers to the industry. Like people who are 19 on 20, 20 yeah. years old could do it. Like the field is a blue ocean. I, I don't have any other words to disclaim it, but like, this is your opportunity. This is where we who are sitting on piles of money don't know how to navigate through the industry. And this is where right. you could help us. And with that, we just wrap up. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was loaded, right? <laughs> I, love it. I don't. I always have a special way to wrap up, anyway. So it's. Uh, but it was. It was sort of like uh, they. They don't need anything more now. Just go into esports. You know. You know where to go. You know. This is. This is. This is what you need to know. Um. And finally, I guess we, we've been talking, of course, you know, about esports, about like some tips about that, and and I just wanted to work from like. You know, you talked about obviously, you know, managing influencers, but, you know, working with digital marketing in sports, which is, I guess, like, uh, it's a big thing, you know, and then marketing itself, like, it's been like, kind of like a hot, you know, I wouldn't say mess, but it's like such a hot thing for people, you know, it's like, if you okay. ask any like I even like, you know, just looking like a few back, a few years back when I was studying my master in, in San Francisco in sport management. And I mean, like half my class was just like, I want to do marketing. Right. And the other half is like okay. game, like game day operations. Right. And then it's like, well, not everyone can work with marketing. I mean, like there could be a lot of people, but there's so much in there. And I guess like, of course, you know, things to think about with digital marketing, but the other element is too is like how can they separate themselves you know from the crowd when everyone is just like i want to do marketing so i will just tell you how the budget flows right because i'm always following the money in this case right. so the majority of money we spend on influencers like 70 percent of the purchases in esports are for, um, influenced by some of like group or an influencer so this is what we talked about before and i don't yeah. want to dwell into that further the second thing is media buying so these are the creatives these are the ads and right now everybody knows how to do targeting right so it's a no-brainer to set up man between 25 and 35 who are interested in football in Norway. Uh, so right. that's a no-brainer practically. And where the magic happens is in the creatives, right? So you have mm -hmm. to be a lot cleverer than ever to just like attract attention. Um, and that would be the second pillar, which is supremely important. The third one is typical, uh, like traditional media buying so that you have like press releases in all the main um, outlets and that you are like positioned in the right publications and in the right way 
wait for it events so we were just like at comic con mm. and at pax um that was a very 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 interesting thing so you have to have kind of budgets there and here like the huge opportunity is video production and how to cover it social media wise uh because right. you are investing shitload of money into being present at these fairs and you really 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 have to make the best out of it so just like this documenting on it for social media is a very hot opportunity i reckon and mm -hmm. the fourth one and i know that it will sound like super cheesy but it's community management and content creation because whoever is in touch with customer has like a high ground into becoming a great content writer themselves i've seen that again and again as we were promoting people so to just like take people from either like customer support or just some sort of support function because they had had this perfect knowledge of the customers that we are serving mm -hmm. and those i think are the hot ones uh yeah. great entries to any company that you can cater and honestly i would rather hire an enthusiast that somebody who would spend like six months learning about the discipline and would practically be like useless to me for the next six months because they wouldn't know the vertical and i mean we need a big mix of both things but do not underestimate the power of the vertical that you are working it because esports is hot sports is hot a lot of money is being pouring in so you just have to be very clever how you will positioning your career and how you want to make those tangible influence because remember like all you need is a good case study or two so later on you can be like what i'm doing right now in this podcast sharing this build of wisdoms wrapping it in a toilet paper and throwing it up people's asses <laughs> no they're just making fun that like whatever we give yeah. as an advice is a form of nostalgia right yeah. so we did a couple of cool projects before and what we learn about it what we remember about it are mainly the good stuff otherwise yeah. it's grind and persistence no 100 what would you, what would you say was uh if you can kind of like you know map out i guess like or highlight one key skill or or something that these you know students should kind of like work towards or work focus on to to kind of like teach themselves i guess social <laughs> moving media. forward now. yeah social media definitely because if you know how to do that and just like document your journey what you are learning what have you been doing it will give you so much visibility and literally like for everybody who's into consulting this this is what one of the three most important sales channels for them so do mm -hmm. social media understand what twitch is go and have a spin on tiktok try to find where you naturally wipe with the channel study it right. create like a couple of viral posts and then you can later on very quickly sell yourself as consultants to ignorant people such as myself <laughs> you're not ignorant though come on you yeah i'm a very self-ironic person <laughs> <laughs> hey i mean like well, well it's like you know i gotta make sure that even if you're self-ironic i just have to make sure that every podcast guest feels like they're the best person in the world oh no worries no worries you're nailing it <laughs> great well maya i mean like we reached the end you know of, of this this episode you know I hope you guys have fun i did i i had a lot of fun it was uh, fast paced i think there's a there's a lot of you know cool wisdom and a lot of you know good insights that people here can can, can take from this and you know of course as always you know if, if you've been here all the way to the end you know make sure to like the video subscribe as well if you haven't already and make sure to write a comment about what kind of social media channel do you prefer and uh, what is maybe like a favorite viral video that that you got some inspiration from and we'd love to check that out in the comments you know so do that and uh, Maya with the uh, one final I guess question or task I guess I have for you I, I don't know how to put this anymore like it's <laughs> we're reaching at this point I love a good challenge bring it on I, I know that that's the thing I mean like we're probably going to be like the, the most enthusiastic about this challenge. It's not that major, but we have like this thing where uh, we always we teach our podcast guests some Norwegian. So that's, that's a, it's a language. All right, let's give it a shot. So with every video we do, we always finish with the snakkes, which means Vi see snakkes. you later. Yeah, which means see you later in Norwegian. So one see more time. See you later. Cool. Uh, and now you say in Sweden. Just say Nasdrawie. Nasdrawie. 
Ah, oh, that's it. That's it. You won at uh, Slavic languages. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Maya. Awesome. That's been fun. Thanks so much for listening. And if you want to learn more about uh, how to develop your career, you're so welcome to reach out to me um, on LinkedIn. So I'm very uh, eager to develop this conversation with you privately as well. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Maya. We'll uh, we'll talk very soon. And thanks everyone for watching.